Start and end frames are now supported by Kling 2.5 Turbo, which is the flagship model from the Kling team. This is great for clean, natural transitions between two similar style images. In this video, I will show you how to create a cinematic AI film scene, starting with a single image, then expanding the story with multiple camera angles using Hicksfield popcorn and Kling 2.5's start and end frames. Also, we will take a look at the Hicksfield angles and free pick spaces for seamlessly changing your camera angles, Hicksfield recast for swapping characters easily, and learn how to use Mid Journey for free. But first, let's watch the cinematic video. Start and end frames feature is now supported by the latest video model by Klink, which is 2.5. Consistency is much higher and transitions look much more natural. I generated initial hero image using Mystic version 3. You can see the prompt on the screen. Mystic models are highly cinematic and their latest version 3 takes this to the next level. Of course, I also use Mid Journey quite heavily while designing my characters initially. It really depends on the result. After finalizing my hero image, I head back to the Hicksfield Popcorn. So Hicksfield Popcorn allows you to expand your universe using a single image and a single prompt. So you can upload your character image here. And then I wrote the prompt, cinematic scene of a knight holding a crafted sword and fighting in medieval battlefield with enemy soldiers. Rain and mats, photorealism, extremely dark cinematic colors. Essentially, I wrote a prompt for world building. And then Hicksfield Popcorn will expand this universe and generate multiple images that I can use. Now, keep in mind that Hicksfield Popcorn results are not final production ready. They require upscaling, but what they provide essentially is an easy solution to expand our universe with a single prompt, which is helpful. On Hicksfield Popcorn, you can upload multiple characters' images, and consistency is quite okay, it's not perfect. Hicksfield Popcorn has two mods. Auto mod will take your hero image and it will automatically divide your prompt into the scenes step by step and will create a full scene from beginning to end. Again, it may not be perfect. It can be some errors that you need to edit some parts or regenerate. This is something you need to be aware of. Alternatively, there is manual mod. In manual mod, workflow is similar. Essentially, you start by uploading a hero image, but what makes this interesting that you can add specifically what's happening in the every scene instead of leaving this job to the Higgs field itself. You can write what happens in the first scene, in the middle and in the end. You can of course add scenes in between and create a full storyboard. Once I use Higgs field popcorn, I had a couple of images that I can use to start my video, the initial transition. You can do this using Clink and Higgs field also has transitions mod. So as a first frame here, I took the battlefield and as a last frame, I added my character's close up and you can choose a couple of transitions from a list. There are multiple options. For me, the flying cam transition is the most cinematic and it fits the best to the situation here. And end result will look like this. I wanted to have this cinematic entrance to the scene, almost like take your audience directly to the middle of the action. And also first time here, we are introducing our character. If you want to build proper AI automations without bleeding money every month, listen up for a second, because this is exactly how I'm solving it in my own setup. Most people don't realize this. N8N, the automation tool from N8N.io, is completely free and open source. That means you can run unlimited workflows, unlimited executions, complex AI chains, all without paying per zap, per run, per whatever. The only thing you actually need is a place where your automations can live 24-7. That's why I'm using today's sponsor, Hostinger, specifically their VPS with the one-click N8N setup. 
instead of running N8N on your laptop or paying $20 to $50 per month for hosted plans with limits, you spin it up on a Hostinger VPS. You get your own private server that's always online, full control and privacy over your data, unlimited workflows and concurrent executions as long as your VPS can handle it. And it's a fraction of typical managed automation costs. Let me show you how fast this is. Go to my link in the description. It takes you straight to the self-hosted N8N page on Hostinger. Choose the KVM2 plan. That's the sweet spot. This plan has two CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes of storage, more than enough for serious automations, client projects, AI workflows. Click on choose plan, pick a yearly plan, then on checkout, click on have a coupon code. Enter Cyber Jungle here for an extra 10% off. In the setup process, select N8N one-click template. Complete the setup and Hostinger will handle the full install for you. You can see now our VPS is running and click on manage app. This will take you to N8N account creation process. Create your N8N account, answer these setup questions and boom, your own automation server is live. To show what's possible, I'm pulling in a pre-built N8N template instead of starting from scratch. In N8N, Go to Templates. Pick one of the AI or YouTube automation workflows. Let's pick Generate AI Viral Videos with VO3 and upload to TikTok. Then click on Use for Free. Copy template to clipboard. It's copy it. Now come back to your workflow instance. Click on Paste and workflow is automatically created. This simple. Now add your API keys for every single tool in this workflow and you got a production-ready automation running on your own VPS. So, if you are serious about automation, content, AI workflows or client systems, check the link at the top of the description, grab the KVM2 plan, use code CYBERJUNGLE for additional 10% off, and start running unlimited N8N workflows on your own Hostinger VPS. The first frame last frame on Kling site works in a similar way, as you can see here, actually, I'm just using images from Hicksfield Popcorn. Of course, they are upscaled, so I'm not using them directly. I had these two, where one is my character looking at an enemy, and in the second one, they have a sword fight. So what I did was I used first one as a first frame, the battle scene as last frame, and I wrote sword fight scene between a hero and a knight with helmet. Sometimes you need to specify and tell model who is who, and then end result was this. By checking this option, you can generate built-in sound with your videos, and they are getting better and better since the first version. Clean sound improved quite a lot. Now we will play with the camera angles a little bit. As I mentioned, if you upload different camera angles of the same scene to Clean 2.5 to first frame and last frames, you can actually generate very cinematic looking cool scenes with this feature. And for that, for this cinematic camera orbit, you need two frames. The first frame is my hero close up and second frame is over the shoulder shot of my character seeing the monster first time. For that, we are heading back to Nano Banana. On Nano Banana side, all I did was uploading my hero's close up image and close up shot of the wolf. And then I wrote, create an over-the-shoulder hero shot of a knight facing a wolf monster waiting in the distance. And here I had the keyframe created. Then all I needed to do, heading back to Clink, connecting these keyframes from initial close-up to the over-the-shoulder shot with the prompt camera orbit around the hero. In a similar example, I created this cinematic camera movement using again first frame and last frame feature on Clink side. And for this particular job, I wrote camera starts on aerial sky view, then slowly flies to the over the shoulder shot. But in order to get the cinematic shot, I needed two frames. Nano Banana is great for generating alternative camera angles. There is an alternative I want to introduce you, and this is called Free Pick Spaces. It's a note based tool that you can use for a variety of different jobs. So you can create alternative camera angles, 360 product shots, product photos, ads social media contents. So for this particular job, I'm gonna use a template called Get Alternate Angles. So I'm clicking on it and it's preparing my space. So it's a note-based workflow, similar to Confi UI and some of the other tools in the market. And 
we are starting with an initial input image. And in the end of this, it will create multiple angles of the scene and it will also combine them to create a final video. It just simplifies things so much. So what I did was I used this initial scene where my knight is facing the wolf monster. And you will realize that here Freepig is actually upscaling the image. And this is very important for final results to look polished and good. After that, Freepig is generating alternative camera angles. It's the same thing, just taking from different camera angles. It has built-in clink integration, so it will just combine these two images and generate a cinematic looking video for you. Another trick I want to show you is exporting last frame of your AI videos changing camera angles and creating this cool shot. Here I generated my video using regular image to video and it's actually not the best looking video, but it's not important, especially second part is completely irrelevant because what I'm gonna do is I'm just picking the keyframe here. That's all I need. I will download this video and export this keyframe. And after that, using Higgs field angles, I'm gonna change the camera angle. Higgs field angles is another nano banana alternative. It has a pretty cool user interface. You can just like move the camera like this in the 3D space. So here is, you can see my keyframe that I exported. And then I just turned the camera like this. So it adds 45 degree rotation. And then I hit generate and then it created this image for me. Another nano banana alternative is Quan image edit. It's really a fantastic model. It's for free to use. You don't need to pay for anything and it gives you really great results. Here, for example, I rotated the camera 90 degree and then it moved the camera nicely for me. So simple to use. You can choose the camera angle from a drop down, and it's right here. Then for dynamic fight scenes and less censored scenes, I actually use LTX. LTX2 Pro is really a great model. It is difficult to generate monster slaying scenes on Clink with some violence and a little bit of blood here and there. It creates sometimes issues, but on LTX side with LTX2 Pro model, I was able to generate this cool scene. And what I did was I simply took the Quen output, uploaded here as an image to video, and I wrote, man with stubbly subtle beard kills the monster brutally mid-air. You can see that I was actually very happy with this video, but I had some consistency issues. Um, this character didn't look like my character at the very beginning. For this job, I wanted to use Higgsfield Recast Studio. On the paper, it allows you to swap your character and just change it to another character. So in my tests with Recast, unfortunately, I had some difficulties. You can see that there are some morphing issues and frankly, my character doesn't really look like the character in the initial image. This is due to the reason that in this original input video, my character's face is not visible throughout the shot. And that's why Higgsfield was really struggling with this. So big news, Midjourney is now free on Meta AI. As of the second week of November, at the time of the recording, you can now access the world's most beautiful image model, Midjourney for free through Meta AI. So this offers a new way to generate images and videos without needing the main Midjourney website. To begin, simply go to meta.ai and sign up. Once on the homepage, navigate to the Create tab on the left side. This is your dedicated Midjourney creation page. To generate an image, type your prompt into the box at the bottom, such as cinematic photo of a wolf monster. I'm gonna change aspect ratio to 16 to 9. I'm gonna hit Generate. Then Meta will create a grid of four pictures based on your prompt. We know this is using Midjourney endpoints because it gives exactly the same results as Midjourney gives. There are a few aesthetic settings that we can go through. First one is variety. It's similar to chaos parameter on Midjourney site, which controls the variety difference between pictures in your generated grid. A high value like 30, 40 results in big difference between the images. The results get quite a lot of variety, as you can see. You have also a weirdness setting and stylization. So if I drop variety a little bit around, let's say 10, and improve the stylization number, this will essentially bring more of the mid-journey aesthetics that we like. They can look a little bit more artsy and a little bit more interesting. 
So let's use the same prompt to see the difference between results. And then this stylization brings a little bit more artsy, a little bit more polished results. You can just simply use style raw. And for this job, similar to mid journey, you can use dash dash raw command. You can edit as a parameter and ensure that your aesthetics are reset and then just hit generate. And it will smartly understand that you want the style raw and it will provide you these results. The role parameter will improve realism and ensure that model listens closely to your exact text prompt and it will look less stylized than usual mid-journey aesthetics. And one of the most exciting features is ability to animate your generated pictures for free. So to do that while hovering over one of the pictures, you can select animate. It won't be like anything mind-blowing. It looks a little bit boring and it's a static animated video. That's all. If you want to customize the animation, download the original picture, use add media option, the plus button here, attach your generated image here to use it in an image to video. I'm going to delete this prompt and I'm going to switch to video. Now I'm going to describe my animation. Let's say wall's eyes turns red and it attacks. I'm going to hit animate. Yes, eyes turned red, but attacking part is not really here. So this is something you need to know that manually animating a video may not be as precise as you might hope. It's not accurate as, for example, other AI video tools like Clink, for example. And another thing you need to be aware of is when you generate an image, you are using mid journey. But once you switch to conversation mode, you are not using mid-journey endpoint anymore. So when you want to make a change, it will actually use its own meta endpoint. I wrote, for example, make the wolf gold. And here's the end result where our wolf has now gold color. Definitely not bad. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about future of AI storytelling, click here.